guys, welcome to Grammar and Writing Lesson 87. Let's talk about your vocabulary. The first word is diction. Diction. And this is kind of a two-part vocabulary lesson because we're going to now talk about some different types of diction after I explain what diction is. Um, and we're going to spread the two different types of diction into two of our lessons. So we'll learn three types of diction and we'll learn another three in tomorrow's lesson. So what is diction? That would be a writer's choice of words. So diction is a writer's choice of words. The words that they use to get their point across, they have to be very selective in what they choose because the types of words you use, your phrases, it changes um, how something is read and how, how a person looks at a particular uh, passage. So diction is a writer's choice of words. It's very important. For example, a writer may use archaic, colloquial, profane, slang, trite, or vulgar dish diction. And those are all the types that we are going to learn in our vocabulary lesson. The first one is archaic diction. Archaic diction. This diction type is just old fashioned. Old fashioned. So, what does old fashioned mean? Well, it means using something that's old. Um, Old-fashioned is something that would be older. It's uh, not really in the style and modo anymore. That's old-fashioned. So, for example, the word wrap for coat is archaic. We don't really use the word wrap to mean a uh, coat anymore. We just say coat or jacket. We wouldn't say, oh, I need to go in and put on my wrap. It's cold outside. No, but people used to. So that is an archaic word. It's an old word when it used to be used, but not anymore. Colloquial diction. Colloquial. You may have heard that term before, colloquial. That would be ordinary or familiar conversation. Things that are said that are just, you know, normal, everyday, always happens types of things. For example, what's up is colloquial. That is a uh, phrase that we say all the time to the point that they made an app um, after that particular phrase. So, uh, What's up is just a colloquial term, meaning how's it going? And the last one we're going to look at today is profane diction. So this is a uh, wording that is irreverent or obscene, meaning it's it's very sacrilegious. It's not something that God would approve of. It's dirty. It's nasty. It's ugly. Um, irreverent or obscene. For example, we avoid using profane diction for it offends people. Um, people could say that uh, taking God's name in vain would be considered a profane diction. That's saying any form of God's name when you're not talking to him. And that's something that I know can be a very easy to slip into and to say things like, um, now I'm going to say an example. I am not taking God's name in vain by giving this example. I'm just giving an example. If someone says, Dios mío, that's you're saying, my God, but you're not actually talking to God. So that is a form of speaking God's name in vain. So we have to be very, very careful about how we speak about God and how we use his name. All right, let's practice. Fill in the blank with the correct vocabulary word. Number one, betrothed, meaning engaged, is an example of blank diction. Let me give you a hint. Betrothed is an old, older word for saying we are engaged. Which type of diction would be an older word? A writer's choice of words is called what? I'm just vegging out is a blank phrase. That's the idea of I'm just hanging out. And number four, words that show disrespect for sacred things are blank. Okay, number one, betrothed, meaning engaged, is an example of archaic diction. Archaic because it's old. A writer's choice of words is called diction. I'm just vegging out is a colloquial 
phrase because it's just something that's kind of common or familiar. Uh, vegging it refers to vegetables, as you may have guessed, because vegetables, they just sit there to grow, right? You know, it seems like they just sit there and they look hard and they just stay there. Of course, we know from our scientific studies that that's not true, that there's a lot going on inside the plant, but they just kind of sit there and look at you. So if we, we sometimes use that um, word, vegging, vegging um, to talk about just relaxing and doing nothing. Words that show disrespect for sacred things are profane. All right, moving right along. Our lesson today is just about irregular verbs. So three irregular verbs and how we form them. Irregular verbs mean that they don't follow the normal pattern. What is the normal pattern? Well, we've talked about it. When you have a typical verb, when it is a plural or I or you for the subject, you do what? You leave it alone, you don't change anything, but if it is a singular subject, but minus I and you, you add an S, very good. So things like that, those would be regular forms. To form the past tense, you add an ED. The progressive, you add ING, things like that. Um, but these verbs are irregular, they don't follow those same rules. So this is the verb to be, to be. So in Espanol, that would be estar. So the present tense would be I am. So when your subject is I, your verb is am. The plural of I is we. Excuse me, sorry, I had to yawn. We are would be the um, how you conjugate that one. For the singular, notice that if the subject is you, your verb is the same. You are, you are. It's not you is, it's not you am, you are. Because Unless you're looking at the context of the sentence, you don't really know what you stands for, if it's singular or plural. So it's just a rule that you always treat uh, the subject you as if it is plural. Okay, that even if you know it's only talking about one person, you still only treat it as plural. Present tense for the singular subjects he, she, it, is, would be is, okay. Then they, that's the plural of he, she, and it. They and they are. In the past, to be changes to was for the subject I, were for the subject you, and then back to was for he, she, and it. Then in the plural, we were, you were, they were. So it's all were. And remember, we shouldn't be too surprised about the you were because, like we said, it gets treated as if it's always plural. All right, let's look at the verbs to have. So the present tense, I have, you have, he, she, it has. Plural, we have, you have, they have. The only one that gets the has would be he, she, and it in the present tense. In the past, we have I had, you had, she, he, she, it had. Then we have uh, plural, I had, you had, they had. So it doesn't matter in the past, if it's singular or plural, it would be had. So the only uh, words that have conjugates into are have, has, and had. Okay, so let's look at the irregular verb to be. The present tense um, and singular, don't forget, singular means your subject is just one person or thing. I do, you do, but he, she, it does. Then plural, we do, you do, they do. So that kind of follows the pattern of plural is all the same plus I and you also make their verbs the same way and he, she, and it are different. But when it comes to the past, it's all the same, just like with had, do is the same, did. I did, you did, he, she, it did, uh, we did, you did, they did. All right, that is it for your verbs. Now let's talk about your homework. 
you need to complete practice, make your app more practice 1 through 20, and review set 14, which is numbers 1 through 13, on pages 75 to 77. Let me know if you have any questions about the concept that we just learned or about the homework that you have. It's better to ask me questions than to get confused and then have to ask me later or do doble trabajo later because you didn't understand what something was asking the first time. All right, have a wonderful day, guys. I love you very much.